By far and away, the most important thing to watch in the coming trading week is the U.S. dollar index. This is the U.S. dollar in 2008 during the last bear market. Those of you who lived through that bear market remember this right around January, late December 2008 is when the stock market broke down. The dollar remained weak through here. And those of you that own commodities remember that commodities in emerging markets held up until roughly mid-July 2008. Now, note that emerging markets and commodities held up longer than stocks in the last bear market, which we believe is an inflationary signal that shows confidence in policymakers and in central bankers to reinflate the economy. So they held up longer as that inflationary hope was still held by the market. That inflationary hope was finally overtaken by a deflationary fear from a collective standpoint in mid-July 2008. The takeaway here is this point right here is when the full-blown bear market began in 2008. Emerging markets came down, oil came down, copper came down, silver came down from this point. Now, the ominous thing is this is August 8th of 2008. Look where the dollar is. And this is the close on September 9th, which was last Friday. These charts look almost identical. You got a 200 day moving average coming down here in the dollar. We've got the same thing here. You've got a 50 day moving average that's consolidating. It consolidated here. You've got a base, a multi month base here in 2008. And we've got a multi month base here in 2011. Here's where the deflationary signal came. Crossed over the 200 day moving average. You'll note where we are here. We just got that same signal on Friday. So going forward, if this rally in the dollar continues, that means things like copper and agricultural commodities may not do as well as some people believe. So the dollar is key, and we'll give you some things to look for to determine whether or not we're leaning towards a total deflationary type signal or to see if some of the inflationary assets or something along the lines of the Australian dollar might hold up longer. This table here shows why it's so important to watch the dollar. What this shows us in this column is the performance of these ETFs or asset classes after the dollar began to rally as it did in August of 2008 in the chart that we just showed you. So this is the performance from early August 2008 when the dollar crossed over the 200 day moving average until November 21st, which is where the dollar stopped that huge rally that it had in 2008, which was a deflationary signal and when the markets were really overcome with fear. So the takeaways here are this is the historical performance in a similar part in the market. So if the dollar were to spike, we may see something like this. This over here is recent correlations to the U.S. dollar, and that's important. Recently, if you've got a negative correlation to the U.S. dollar, you're in red here. Gold is kind of a fence sitter in this environment. And if you look at the correlation, a chart of gold, Gold's correlation has been improving in a bullish manner relative to the dollar, meaning it's less dependent and less tied to the dollar has been the trend. So the takeaway there is gold may hold up, may is the key word, a little bit better than you would expect even if the dollar were to spike here. And that's somewhat what the market's telling us. That might not be the case for silver. So these are the correlations here. How you use this table and how we plan to use it is if the dollar continues to rally, these are your best bets given what we know, which would be shorts, meaning the S&P 500 would drop. Notice how much the S&P 500 dropped here. It dropped 37, 38% from the time the dollar spiked in August of 2008 until late November 2008. Some other takeaways are agricultural commodities got hit hard. The Australian dollar got hit hard. Safe havens like consumer staples and utilities and dividend stocks all got whacked pretty hard in here. 
Preferreds, financial preferreds, hit extremely hard. Copper, emerging markets, which these are somewhat of your traditional inflationary or inflation friendly or protection assets, got hit extremely hard. So going forward, if you see the Australian dollar weak relative to the U.S. dollar, if you see agricultural commodities come down and you see the S&P 500 come down and the dollar go up, this would be your short list of assets to potentially con consider if those trends continued. These assets are assets that you would want to consider cutting back on or avoiding. Now, we do own gold mining stocks, so we've got to watch those closely, but you'll see in a chart that we show later, gold mining stocks and gold may somewhat be the exception here to the historical rule. Since the current state of the world is different today than it was in 2008, this table here takes the table from the that we just looked at from 2008 and kind of carries it forward to the present day. What you're looking at here is you're looking at the correlations to the U.S. dollar. So you're looking for assets if the dollar rallies that have a positive correlation to the dollar. That's what this looks at. This looks at how they performed in 2008, which is what we just looked at in the previous table. We also want assets that are currently healthy. So this is a technical rank of how these assets are performing or the health of them now. And there can be a lot of ties here. These aren't typos. And then the other thing we wanted to do, since in 2008, we really weren't in a position where it was realistic to think that the euro or the dollar could run into major, major problems. So what we wanted to look at, too, was how did these assets perform in 2011, earlier in the year, when the dollar rallied? The takeaway is the final rank here says the higher you are on this list, the higher the probability that you'll perform well if two things happen. If the dollar rallies sharply and the stock market remains weak, these are good things to look at in a deflationary environment. This isn't a buy list. This is a watch list. This is the list we're going into this week. We do own some of these assets now, and if we see what we want to see in the next week or two, we may add to them. This is the exact same table that we just looked at. It's just the ETFs or asset classes that didn't rank well based upon the parameters that we just looked at. So the takeaway is if the problems in Europe continue, the dollar rallies sharply, if stocks remain weak, these are assets that you would want to be careful about based upon these parameters that we just talked about in the previous table that was all green instead of all red. Australian dollar, silver, agriculture, commodities, etc., emerging markets are things that you want to be careful about if these conditions hold. This is an update in table format of the charts that we've shown in the last two weeks. The purpose of showing this to you is to show simply that all of the long-term sell signals that we presented in the last two or three weeks remain in force as of Sunday, September 11th. You can use the pause button here if you want to take a look at this a little bit more. These signals are more important than the monthly signals because a monthly signal, you'd really like to see it hold into the end of the month. The problem with doing that now is it's only really the first trading week in the month. The next three weeks could get very, very ugly if the dollar continues to rally. So this analysis of the current state of the markets aligns well with a dollar rally and a shift to a full-blown deflationary tone in the markets. This is also a brief update of something we've presented in the past. You can find the previous videos by going to Google and searching for Shivako Capital Channel and then click on the link to YouTube and you'll find all the videos. You can go back and review the ones for the last three weeks to a month. They should be helpful for do-it-yourselfers and, and people that might be looking for a money manager. Takeaway here. Bearish death cross late in an economic cycle concerning the thing we want to watch here this is the 200 day moving average if this rolls over it begins to look more and more like the dot com peak that occurred from march of 2000 till roughly september 
of 2000 is when the market was peaking. And it also makes it look more and more like the peak in October of 2007. And this period right here looks a lot like where we were in January of 2008. Why we look at this is pretty simple. This is the 200-day moving average. We know the math for it. These are the numbers that are going to drop off on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. If the S&P 500 remains below 1231, roughly, it says the bias will be for this 200-day moving average to roll over in a negative manner, which is negative for the stock market, and increases the probability that we'll break this August low. The other takeaway is the trend from last week is things are getting worse in terms of trying to save this. Last week, the median number was 1222. Now it's further away. It's 1231. The longer this goes on, these are the numbers that will drop off. The harder it will be to prevent this from rolling over, which is bearish. So this also aligns with the potential for our dollar rally sometime in the next few weeks and for a deflationary bias in the markets. A good way for us to monitor the battle between inflation and deflation is to look at the U.S. dollar relative to the Australian dollar. If you own commodities, you want this chart to look like this rather than to look like this. Here's where we are in the present day. So you can see in 2011, September 9, 2011, does look similar to August of 2008. If that's the case, that's a negative sign for copper, agricultural commodities, and to a lesser degree, silver, and then to a lesser degree, gold. This is the same chart we just looked at, U.S. dollar index relative to the Australian dollar. What this shows you is what happened next here. So the differentiator really for commodities is if the present day chart looks more like this, Again, it's good for commodities. If we get something that looks like this, that's a bearish signal for commodities and a stronger bearish signal for stocks. It should be noted that the stock market really didn't do well here or here. It was just the degree of the plunge. The stock market dropped more like a 10, 11% drop here, where after this, the stock market dropped close to 40%. So... The U.S. dollar relative to the Australian dollar, if we see something like this, and this is kind of what it looks like right now, these moving averages are starting to turn up right here. We're sitting right on the 200-day moving average. looks very similar to this. If we get this, that's bearish. If we get something like this, then that's good for commodities, and stocks may, may hold up better if we see something like this. If we're looking for a little bit of a cheat sheet to try to determine which way this thing is leaning, a good thing to look at might be the ratio of agricultural commodities to treasuries. And why is that? Well, agricultural commodities would represent the inflationary camp, and treasuries would represent the deflationary or defensive camp. So what we were trying to determine before, does the current market look more like late 2007, early 2008. And if that's the case, that's the scenario where commodities hold up better and the stock market's declines aren't as pronounced. So here's what it looked like in December of 2007. This would be the bullish case for commodities and the less bearish case for stocks. Here's what it looks like in the present day down here. You have to admit this really doesn't look like an inflationary signal. This looks like it's leaning towards the deflationary camp. So how you use this chart, this would be the DBA divided by TLT, is if this trend continues, that says the odds increase for a more precipitous decline in the stock market, and the odds increase that agricultural commodities, copper, silver, and again, to a lesser degree, gold, would potentially be weak as well. Continuing with the cheat sheet theme, once again, for commodities, you want DBA divided by TLT, which is agriculture divided by bonds. You want it to look like this going forward. That's good for commodities. 
you don't want it to look like this. This is, this is where commodities break down. This is the present day. If you look at this objectively, it sure as heck looks like the present day looks more like this than it does this right now. And what that tells us is the market is leaning towards outcomes that look similar to this table that we showed earlier. So unless something changes markedly on these charts and we see the trends that we just showed change in some material and meaningful manner, it means we will use these assets, especially the ones in green, as our short list and we would be more concerned about these assets. If the dollar does indeed rally and agricultural commodities become weak, you have to keep in mind that these type of outcomes are within the realm of possibility in the next few months. And while these numbers seem outrageous, you have to remember when this happened before we had the, the Lehman situation and a banking and liquidity crisis, we have serious problems in Europe right now. And if we get a partial default in Greece or we get a downgrade of banks in France, we could have similar problems and see something maybe not exactly of this magnitude, but something that surprises on the downside. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.